perfect. Sarita, we can start. Oh, yes. Thanks. Good evening, all. Today, um, the session is the GUI framework and MVC architecture. In this session, we'll be cover, uh, this session is divided into two parts. In first part, we'll be learn what is a GUI and what type of soft skill required for designing the GUI and which framework we are using to design the GUI in automation. And uh, how we can use that uh, Tinker G uh, framework to design the GI. I will show you one practical based question so we can how we can design the good GI with the help of Tinker. And in, sec uh, in second session, I, uh, I like to share the MVC architecture and uh, how we can implement the MVC architecture with the Tinker. So first, Thing is, what is a GUI? GUI means graphical user interface. When you design any GUI, the first user is directly interacting with that interfaces, and that interface uh, should be uh, smart enough to understand the user requirement so that user can communicate with that interface easily. And for uh, making a good GUI, you need to uh, understanding of the good um, requirement of the user, uh, you need uh, some soft skill that will make your GI best, okay, than the other GI. And to define, uh, to design the GI, you are using a different, different type of the tools like a button, text box to take uh, input from user. Uh, to say about that particular text box, we are adding a label. Uh, we are uh, using a checkbox, combo box, all these things you already aware with that. So I am not focusing uh, here about uh, each of the uh, widget uh, which are using to design the GUI. I am focusing what is the uh, what uh, we are not following while the uh, while designing the good GUI. Okay. So first thing. You all uh, miss you now. You are know the what is the GUI and what type of skill you needed. So for this, you know all the technical aspect required for designing the GUI. But the, there are the some the soft skills you also needed to design the good uh, UI. There needs to being a good UI designer or UI designer. Okay. So when uh, you are talking about the the content at that time, you must be uh, able to understand what is the um, requirement of user, what uh, what outcome that um, is uh, uh, giving that tool, and who is the user. Means you are the miss. You should have the skill of research to understand what expected from that tool. And oh, for that, Sarita, hello, can hello. I interrupt once? Yeah, are you yes. sharing your screen? Yes, yes. Sorry, okay. We cannot see your screen. If okay, you're sharing. okay. Sorry, sorry. Just yes, I'm sharing. Uh, Shantanu, I suppose you had that particular doubt, right? Yes. Okay. So now we can we, yeah yes. just i'm going back once again these are the topics we are that i discussed already which we covered in this session and uh, this is the regarding to the gi gi is the first thing where the user is interact with the tool and uh, to design the tool we are using the various graphical uh, widgets like a button text box label checkbox like this Okay, and then now currently I'm discussing this the what type of soft skills you require to design the good GI. I know all of we are the technical and we are we have the technical skills, but uh, um, so I'm not covering that one. I'm covering here only the soft skill required for if you are a good researcher about the requirement and you understand 
who, uh, who is the user of that particular tool and uh, what exact expectation uh, of a user from that tool so your uh, you miss your uh, graphical user interface is always better than the other okay uh, that um, and the second thing in that particular tool the all the information should also cover and it should be able to communicate with the user if suppose one tool required the long time to uh, perform the some action then tool uh, intermediately tool should be response to the user what type of action they are doing so that uh, that care should be taken by the ux designer or ui designer how to communicate it with the user in the time of the processing okay so that the ui should be designed in a way so that it can communicate user to understand what processing is doing by that tool uh, usually what type of uh, color should we use uh, is there um, is any color which will be uh, affect the user uh, or the if that tool required a uh, miss if user is using that tool in whole day and if there is a some like a red color and green color are there then it is very hard to use in a whole day uh, it's a very uh, eye panic so uh, the ui designer should aware about the color which type of layout should use the where the image is required where is the design required uh, miss there we are not uh, just putting the images and putting the design to create a one uh, designer framework we are just as per the requirement and who is the user on the basis of that we have to understand what type of design we have to deliver what type of color we should use and what uh, what is the layout for that and uh, for this the you uh, miss uh, ui developer should have a sub, uh, some type of other skill so he can be um, able to communicate with the user to understand their uh, miss requirement if the requirement is properly understood then the final ui is a um, this ui has a good and better qualities in there okay so these are the soft skills required to design a good ui now i'm going for the uh, different different frameworks which are available in the python but uh, here we are focusing on the tinker because the tinker is a lightweighted framework which is provided with the python and uh, it is easy to use okay so we are here focusing on this while other frameworks is available here so why we want to use the tinker tinker first thing it's a object oriented second thing it's a fast and easy to implement and it's a lightweight it's i mean this quality uh, makes the tinker uh, you we should use okay so this is the quality due to uh, which we are using a tinker here now when we are using the tinker what the step we required first we had to import the tinker after that we have to implement uh, the uh, gui for that particular window okay and after adding the multiple widget in the graphical user interface we have to, to look it to uh, miss add that into the our window framework okay the some type of here i know you i'm going a little bit fast but my focus is not to explain the tinker the, the way the, on google there are the various uh, miss you can search the various uh, how we can be you work with the tinker and uh, all these things what, what type of widget available what is the use of the widget you all know all these things but how we should use the tinker so that it will be provide the good interface to us this is the main motto of this the session so in the in this session i'm covering this uh, highlighted uh, widget uh, while giving a demo of uh, actual application okay these are the widgets available with the tinker 
and uh, some of these attributes which are we are commonly used with these the widgets and there are the while uh, designing the U, uh, ui there are the some geometrically management uh, available here first one is a pack the, with the help of pack we can be packed the multiple widgets there uh, as a block but uh, the second thing is a grid and the third thing is a place for place you should uh, miss know the x and y uh, um, miss, uh, we have to uh, place the their uh, x y coordinates but the grid is the best one and in this demonstration i'm going to use the grid grid where the table form uh, means the widget we can um, place in a table like structure so it is easy to uh, miss uh, manage the your screen okay i will explain this with the help of the example then after that i am going for the one small uh, application where the, i'm using this tinker okay this This is the one of the example of the application where I'm using a tinker to design this. I will explain you how, how I use that particular widget, how I use the, that geometrical management tool. Um, so uh, I am uh, miss uh, how I can design this the application. This, the code of this application is here. This is the application which are calling the view, and this is the view file. I will uh, explain later why I keeping this uh, both the things uh, separately. First, my focus is to explain the how we can use the Tinker for designing our view. Okay. This is the view class. In the view class, I'm defining some colors. So which are I'm using here. First thing, before to start the designing, you have to define the frames. Inside the frame, you are going to design. Uh, means uh, you are going to put your widget inside that. The first frame is a menu frame, and after that list frame. For menu frame, this one is used. For list, list frame is using this one. Okay. Uh, TOC configuration. These are the different different configuration for that. The different different frames are defined here. So first, I'm going for how I deploy the menu frame inside where I'm using a button widget, okay. So there is a only one required column. So I don't need the much more, miss, no need to define the whole table here. You, you can break your screen in multiple frame and how many, uh, miss, uh, whatever number of the uh, columns you require, you can break accordingly. If you uh, define the whole screen in a one only frame, but then the problem is that you, um, when you want to define, uh, means, uh, you want the more than the one column there. So, and some want the uh, large space and some want the small space. Then managing this thing, it is very critical at that time. So best practice is that 
you divide your screen in a multiple frame and you consider your one frame as your one table and you divide it as you want as per your requirement so for first frame i need only one column and in one column there is only one widget day present which is a button okay and button has this property that is the text miss wish text is appear on that now what action should perform on this the button this is the miss uh, we can define likewise and we have to define that function okay i will show you later the first focus is here how we can define the the ui user interface for uh, using a tinker and after um, adding the button here row number here okay i'm just packing this frame and this is the anchor tag which i'm using nwn for the north west means it's a upper al alignment is that top and left okay the anchor has total nine properties one is the center second uh, and the four is the north east west north south and uh, other are the north south uh, sorry north uh, north east and north west south east and south west now after that i need a one list which has a large size than this one so i added the another frame the name of the frame is here list frame inside i required the central um, is, uh, by default tinker has a central alignment if you want left right you have to add the anchor or the alignment there you have to check the is it that wizard supports the anchor or the align okay on um, this the um here label is added for this the label uh i'm using a label widget which has also likewise the text box also has a text property here also text property here also uh, you can select the background color if you want to change it uh, font you can do the larger font if you want to highlight it if you want the bold then you have to specify here this is the name of the font font size and the style okay and in the list i uh, this is the list box where the selection mode is you can select the multiple selection also and single also and uh, this is the uh, where we can define the width of that particular list box but uh, you need the, that list box should be fill up dynamically so for that i am defining the one of the fill list function which fill that list dynamically okay and uh, uh, this list should be active so this is the this making the act to under that there is a one label which is a which is i am using for giving the message if user is not selecting the um any option available inside the list so there should be a some uh, error message please select the uh, file please select the json likewise i will show you there is a one message uh, label is also present but currently it is a hidden so there because there is a text is a blank okay and uh, uh, i am also specifying the wrap link if the message or the anything is more than the uh, width of that particular level what what will happen so we need to uh, on the wrap property here and uh, by default it has a red color but if it is giving a uh, any message which is regarding to the um, status or anything so we can change also this color okay and uh, after that i'm adding that label first in the grid uh, in a first row so i don't i need only one column here and in second also i need the uh, only one column so i'm adding that row by row and after that i am adding also message uh, message label also there the name is always be uh, should always reflecting and uh, i am packing that in his frame here 
in the search way i am also uh, dividing that particular screen in a uh, multiple frame like the this is the poc configuration framework this is the uh, a package framework this is a non lti framework we can say this is the lor framework we can say this is a qti framework we can say this is the button framework and under that if i need the some type of the labeling so i say this is the label framework and uh, to say uh, what type of task user done there is a done task list in that done task list i am adding a uh, i am showing to you okay before going to that i am showing how the check box should run uh, check button should work uh, and okay uh, label i already covered okay the, this is the checkbox button. In the checkbox button, it has a uh, property. This is the text which are showing here. And a variable means the which value you are means we are uh, means are you selecting or unselecting this value? Who say this variable say it has a value or not? So by default, if you want it is it should be checked then the value should be one otherwise you can place the value zero uh, as per the requirement for currently this application need the value one so i'm setting here one and for each checkbox you should define the one variable so that you can retrieve the value of that particular uh, checkbox this on the check if you want on the check some action should be performed so you can the command here for this application the color changes the feature is here a uh, miss when you select it is green and when you unselect it's the uh, violet color okay uh, that the uh, background color and a width what should be the width of this particular uh, text so that is i'm added here now the this is also one of the checkbox I'm showing a option button. After that, I will show how the task list is work here. Yeah. For option button, these are the option button. For that, I'm using a QTI configuration frame here. So first is a label after the label there are the two options for two options there is a no need like a checkbox we need a for each checkbox we need one variable but for the option button for a one group of option for one group of radio button you required only one variable so i'm defining here the first variable is the qti value uh, you can uh, define that variable numeric also you can define the string also I am defining here string where whose by default first value is the canvas. So when I am starting this application, the canvas is selected here. And for radio button, text property, justify property, variable, you need to define the variable to perform the action here. And a command on selection, what will be happen for this, you need the command. And all other property, uh, you all miss aware with that background color foreground color width and everything this in the in this group there are the two options available first one is a canvas and second is a model and so for that model but variable is same qti value uh, on the basis of that variable which option is selected that functional uh, uh, function can know which option is selected okay uh, this one is the option button after that uh, these are the buttons on the button we need the some type of action to perform the action we need to define the command here uh, and this is the after clicking on the download asset button what should uh, happen that we define separately in the down okay these are the buttons where we define the command there and the text these are the two required properties okay after that these again we i'm binding i here we uh, miss here i need the total number of four columns start from zero to three i'm packing this button here 
if i am using this one the, there is a problem of managing but i am dividing the screen in multiple frames so i can easily um, manage the whatever the widget i want to place in uh, which order i can manage easily due to which i am dividing screen into the multiple frame otherwise it will be very uh, miss uh, we cannot define as required from miss user interface okay so for this you have to properly break down your screen into the multiple frame so that your uh, user interface is looking more better and uh, is a more friendly for the your client uh now i'm going to show you the done task list uh, these are the labels additionally i'm added here done task list in this case done task list it may be possible some uh, miss some process is successfully done so in that particular uh, miss feedback or in the particular status there should be a success word i am matching that success word on the basis of that success i am defining the green color means that action performed correctly properly for the failure i am using a red color for if anything is ignored there i am defining here on the basis of the status of the application the total number of four colors and a four keywords for that you can define as you required this is the default one and these are the three are i'm defining if the um, some status is out of these three then by default it will showing a blue foreground so this is the uh, and uh, for this i'm using just text box it is not any special uh, miss uh, a special widget it's a just normal widget where you can see the multiple color of text on the basis of their status uh, i'm using a five so that um, i'm giving a height equal to five uh, so this is a multi line text box now i'm adding here the uh, progress bar this is the progress bar where you can uh, say how much task is done uh, from the uh, whole task you can specify in percentage okay and after the status bar i am adding a status label to say about that status uh, progress and uh, uh, what exactly where you, uh, is your cursor so that user must aware with the what action in background is going on if suppose that particular task need the uh, more than the 5 minute then the uh, in background what happen the user not aware of it uh, is it going correctly or not if your uh, user interface is properly communicate with the user at time to time i am not saying you have to communicate each and every steps but uh, it should be after a few minutes Uh, after a five minute here, uh, there is, should be a one message for, uh, regarding to the status, so that user aware what type of process going in the background. Um, miss, uh, he um, the tool is communicating with the client. Okay, uh, what type of action is going uh, in the background? For this, the status label I am adding here. Okay, now I am showing you the functionality of this one. and uh, these are the code of when uh, how the background is changed and everything okay now i'm showing how this is working uh on the check box these are changing the color even though the uh, this uh, miss this attribute is not required if it is not lti and uh, for this the it is um, likewise it is working here if you select the which functionality currently now uh, now added in um, that application so here i am uh, giving a message sorry this feature is not available here 
yes it is a uh, interacting while the that feature is available in the user interface but this feature is not available functionally here so you can uh, use uh, likewise message box for the client to say this feature is not available currently or showing that i'm just i'm not do, uh, I'm showing you the whole application here i'm just showing how the ui work kind of what only on um, what thing you should be covering only view pie uh, and what thing you should not be cover in view pie that only i am going to demonstrate you the um, here with the um, here i am not selecting which is required for this button so this is messaging you can cover this message in the view pie select the json after the selecting i am i am selecting the one of the json and this is the download asset now it work now it working it is showing the you are selecting this file and also this is the dynamic list uh, it is fetching filling this list from one of the folder if you add something there and you press the refresh button that will be added here i will be show you it uh, just you can see here the some yellow boxes and uh, this is the golden color these are for the folder which are the folder you can skip if your um, means uh, client not required the folder uh, if your client want to be loop the zip uh, text file or any zip file but it is not required to your tool you can show in different color so that we uh, it should be highlighted it should not be selected here text file is there zip file is there but it is not required in, uh, as a input for this tool so i am showing it with the different different color bands uh, if i delete this file it will be affect without the, uh, closing the tool i'm deleting these files i'm also deleting few more files so you can easily identify what is the difference now it has a few number of files now i'm just going to refresh it now it is showing whatever number of the files are there miss client no need for the uh, changing their input to close the tool so you should be clear while uh, designing your uh, user interface so that uh, it is very friendly or easy to user to use it these all these things is regarding to the first session um, first part of this session where, where i'm um, miss i will i'm i demonstrate you the what is the what is the good practice of the graphical user interfaces what cover inside the tinker framework what should you have to follow the practices so that your tool will be graphically looking more better than the other tool if you have any doubt you can ask otherwise i will be move for the next part of this session is the second part where i will be show you the mbc architecture do you have any doubt can i move further yes yes for me hello No, no, it's yes. just for me. Yes, yes, yes. I'm going for the MVC architecture. I'm not demonstrating here again. The I'm not uh, going to explain you a much more theory about the MVC. What is the MVC is there? I'm just if for the theory knowledge, you should aware with the practical. So it will be better for us technically to implement. 
so uh, here also in this uh, second part of this session i am also going for explaining the one application which are using a mvc architecture i will show you a two uh, two application one is a real life application and one is a only demonstrate the mvc architecture the first will be go for the mvc architecture based demonstrate application mvc as all of you may miss i think you are already aware with the mvc word but of how it work uh, inside the tinker and how we can be implement to design the tool uh, for this um, this is the session okay here model means where we are storing managing data writing something or doing any logical part the first interface is a miss first thing is a for client is a view where we are and designing our the graphical user interface and uh, we are now we are aware about the how we can be use the tinker to design the best uh, graphical user interface for the user and the second thing is a controller which controlling the views and model and actually model is the core part of your application which are doing a all functional thing first thing the validation of uh, validate the input second thing uh, it is uh, performing the some uh, logical operation if that application need to store the data in the database uh, or fetching the data from the database so these all these things is handled with the uh, in this the uh, m okay in mvc architecture so i, I will uh, i am sharing you the one of the architecture diagram of this the uh, mvc architecture it is for the sbm it's single document interface where the you are not putting a multiple interface for the user only there is a one interface through which user fulfill their the requirement so for this it may be possible that your application while it is a single document interface okay but it has a that utility which is not depend on each other so you can divide your application into the multiple applications so that you if uh, you can reuse that the independent uh, application for the other application okay so this is the means uh, this is the quality of this architecture you can reuse that the code for the other application also and you can use the other applications here also if in required so for this the your while your application is a uh, single documented but inside there are the multiple applications is working in the background and uh, each application have their the view file and they have a, their own controller and they have on uh, their own model if your application want the uh, miss uh, you are defined designing the window based application and uh, for the same tool you need the uh, uh, mobile application then you can easily take out this the model uh, part and you, uh, you have to only change the view and controller part for the mobile application this is the beauty of this architecture okay the user is actually interacting with the application and application is showing the outer view which is a child uh, means child uh, child of this view classes okay these are the multiple view classes you can define the your uh, one view class with which user is interfacing but in the background multiple applications are working which has the same architecture which is the mvc architecture okay this is the architecture diagram how we can be uh, practically implemented i will show you just i'm uh, giving a brief uh, about this the mvc m for model model is using for the data for getting the data for writing the data to performing the logical functionality and it should be independent from the view and controller so that we can be reuse that model for the other type of application like a web application mobile application the next is a view the view is communicating with the user uh, and uh, it should have very little amount of logic like uh, 
if you are not selecting something then it should be prompt you so you should select this one more miss it should not cover more than that okay and if you communicated with the controller view never communicated with the model view is always communicating with the controller and controller is communicating with the model and view the last is the controller controller is the main part which is the intermediator in between the view and model which route your application to communicate uh, view and model with each other i am going to show you the application of uh, application of mvc this is the here this is a mvc here you can see this is your application we uh, this application pi has only and uh, defined which view should you use which controller is working there it is a, actually it is defining the model and it is providing the interaction between the model and view with the help of this port okay and uh, the, this is the your main uh, only it is for i am mean, designing this is for only demo purpose so it is not covering much more things it is covering just the, to uh, illustrate the mvc architecture only the in that particular there is a one application um, which is a email application inside the email application you can see one view file is here controller file is here view file controller file after the view controller is working and after that the model is working. okay so the role view the role of view is showing the application the role of model is performing the operation like here the save operation is performed and validating the input this is the uh, miss this is the uh, function of the model and the controller is just mapping the model and view and it is passing the ball towards the uh, model and if the model uh, giving some um, any, miss any feedback then it, this controller is again go back to the view this is the uh, mvc architecture i am showing this application by running just closing this one This is the simple application where the output is available. In the output folder, I'm deleting this. Okay. You can see after that what happened. If I'm adding a something which is not valid, okay, and I'm going to save. So now it is giving the error. But how it works? behind will be see again once again okay and if i'm giving something it again invalid so again it is not keeping somewhere if i'm providing the proper input then the that message here your your message is saved and this message is that particular mail address we can see here how it functionally working i'm showing it again we are going again back to the code this is the view oh, sorry this is not this is the view for the view where only one entry box is there one button is there and one label is for saying the what is correct or miss for validating the entry okay and this controller controller uh, this controller is set here and the controller is view is calling the controller save and controller have a save function 
and say this controller is calling the model save okay and model is validating if it is not proper then it think it raises the error and it again go back to the view okay again control if it is success then it uh, come here and the message is display the email is set and the, this process is done here so this is the mbc architecture where we can uh, miss uh, we can break our application in the form of three way uh, and uh, the, the beauty of this uh, architecture we can reuse the many part and uh, you can again for define and designing the another tool you can copy paste this and uh, you you have to only change the uh, view miss change the view and the functionality accordingly it will be uh, very helpful to reuse and uh, deploy the fast applications so uh, is there any doubt can I go for the real life application where I'm, uh, I can demonstrate to you the multiple, uh, how you can be uh, deploy the multiple application inside the single application. This I will be demonstrate in a real life example, how you can uh, you miss pack your multiple application for one, for single tool. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, this is the one of the two uh, just running you running this it is a good practice to um, make while um, making uh, any new tool to define the uh, one virtual uh, environment and inside that whatever your application required that uh, your miss libraries you have to you should install inside that uh, that miss that makes the impact on your the tool exe your tool exe size, uh, size will be less um, will less and uh, it will be uh, affect uh, correspondingly on client side also it is the light weighted if you use the virtual environment if you not using a virtual environment then it will be very heavy and uh, it will take a lot large time to response also The, uh, I already show you this in a, your first session, the how I, I can define the um, Tinker framework for this. This application is a very helpful. Um, the, actually, this application is uh, using three application in the bag. So I will, I'm going to show you the how it code is here. You can see this is the master folder which is required to run this the application and uh, there are the multiple uh, application you can see this is the IMSCC application, JSON application and this is the QGI application. These applications is working, uh, back, working in background for this button. For the first two button IMSCC application is working. For QTI package, uh, this QTI application is working, and for downloading the JSON, JSON application is used. Means for only one interface, there are the three applications which are using. But while they are the three, but all these three applications have a same architecture. I'm going to show you. If you open this one, you can see there is a view file there is a controller file and these this is are the uh, this is the model file and the model is again divided into the multiple layer if you divide your application in multiple layer then the for the complexity point of view it is uh, 
um, very um, means are uh, very clear for the next uh, developer also. If you giving a KT to next developer, then it is easy to understand the code because we are dividing our main task into the sub task. So you can divide your task into the framework also. For this application, whatever the required basic means uh, uh, utility, you can divide that utility into the multiple part and you pack it as a that of uh, multiple file in one framework so that the um, next um, developer can understand what is the means it can understand very easily the what is the logic how it is be uh, modulate and uh, uh, the, even though a security point of view if you divide your uh, application in multiple layer it is the best so for for my application i am always using a first layer as a validator uh, once the input is validated it go for the workspace there is a one workspace and workspace is doing their work here and a framework is helping to complete their task means the workspace workspace is getting the whatever the required uh, utility they yeah, just workspace calling that one and using here the it may be possible that application uh, is uh, storing that data into the database it may be possible it store this in json file it may be a some word file that means um, what is the output and what is input that is not affecting this architecture this architecture is remains same whatever the utility of the application and uh, you can reuse that one this is the beauty of that one okay now uh, i'm going to demonstrate this the real life application here you can say this is the uh, validation well uh, layer where the user is validating their uh, inputs uh, for this we can see the validate input is checking if validation is false then it is again return back to uh, to the controller and controller again uh, going to feedback to the view okay if it is validating then it is going for the next layer the next layer where it is defined uh, it is again checking after validating it is checking is it the output already exists if it is exists it again asks do you want to remove it and uh, start again the in this way it is interacting with the user also but it is not directly interacting with the user uh directly it is interacting with the help of the controller and controller is interacting with the view uh if you go here the controller is not doing anything controller is just calling the function which is required for the completing the task which is initiated from the view okay and uh, here it is going back to the view which feedback is given by the model okay as uh, model uh, here so it is going back to view these are the these all these functions is for interacting with the view and all these these two functions is interacting with the model okay so this is the first layer where we are validating after the validating we are confirming and after confirming we are going to execute the actual task and that is the this is the workspace uh, where it is this is the workspace okay and for doing uh, miss for completing their task in this workspace this workspace is calling the framework there inside that there is a framework folder and the framework folder you can divide it into the multiple subfolder and uh, whatever the configuration you can you required accordingly okay so in that uh, there are the miss uh, utility is defined and dividing into a multiple layer inside the framework framework is a package of the various utility which is required for that application to fulfill the user requirement and uh, it's available in the work uh, it is always helping the 
workspace to accomplish their task okay so you can see for the access management the different layer uh, miss different file is there for csv management there is a different file for package creation there is a different file okay so this is the total mvc architecture where uh, i'm i i show you the one of the application in if you go in the another application you can select any one you if you want to qti app then you can go in uh, here also but if you observe the architecture is same means you don't have to care about the much more thing if you want to understand the code of other person also uh, if you want to change just some sub part of the application so you don't focus on the whole application uh, uh, here you have to focus on the small part and again that part is again divided into small ones so your focus is only on your the main logic not on whole application means you are uh, you are going more refinery uh, here in a way to accomplish the smallest minor part task so this um, this is a very good architecture where you can implement in your application so you can get the benefit from this uh, architecture to use understanding purpose and even though various technical purpose it is a very helpful so i think i covered the most of the thing from here and uh, if you feel it's a uh, very fast so i can repeat if uh, any part you don't understand uh, i'm using this reference even though i'm adding the references here if you go uh, here if you want to understand the pack or you want to understand the grid so you can click here so you go, you will be go uh, in google where the you are uh, miss uh, it will it is uh, it has a hyperlink where the exact detail available there okay any question from your side you can ask here my google is handy any questions and uh, sorry to yes. Uh, why we are using theory because in, we are not creating multiple thread so why so why we will use if we use a single thread so what is the purpose of using thread uh while uh, our application is not uh, using a multiple threading like a web applications is required okay but uh, it is a actually it is a window based application and window based a window using a multiple threading there okay so if you are using a uh, thread there is a uh, miss a less chance of the uh, miss uh, your uh, if your task is uh, too much long then it will be affect the uh, miss not responsing uh, you can see not responding on your screen if you are not using a thread okay uh, on your user interfaces to avoid that if you use the thread here the, then it for the os purpose for the your, your operating system purpose and for your client response purpose it is the best practice to use the thread inside the finger application while initiating the main task i think uh, it is cover uh, do you want more detail no, I, i got it actually on uh, the part of this application i, I will give you uh, your answer but for this the today's session only in the part i uh, miss i'm not covering the that one uh, over here the threading and all this thing only i am covering the mvc architecture and the graphical user interface if we are go um, miss if you we want to uh, understand the uh, trading it's the uh, out of scope of this session i will cover it later okay
anyone have any other questions uh, shantanu i suppose uh, sarita won't be able to see raise hand while she is sharing her screen uh, so yeah i so, can't Sarita. able to see if someone is raising hand and can i no, stop I, yeah yeah you can stop sharing sarita this yeah. is a problem so with that. google meet yes no problem no problem so i was just asking so uh, since we are making the application right so uh, mdc uh, there are there should be multiple modules so is there a uh, since we are making models is there a requirement for a database in the model section or we can add models uh, like we did or we can or should we directly call the packages from the controller itself so what i'm asking is there a requirement for model or we can directly call the packages from the apps from controller itself that is what i need uh, miss you want to interact with the, some other uh, app applications in that case no no let's say uh, uh, your application there is no requirement a database for, yes yeah, let's say you, my application doesn't require a database i can i call the application from the controller itself directly right uh no you don't uh, miss uh, you don't uh, your, your uh, controller should call the model always okay and your model okay, okay. should be able to take care of the database activity or if you want to get something from the database then the that is covered in your model part okay so you can okay. define it in the one uh, file or you can define the other framework for interacting with the database uh, if your application need the multiple database you want a uh, uh, like a mongo and a, if uh, mysql these are the two different databases and they have a different approach even though so you can define the different different framework inside your model so you can divide your model in a multiple layer as per your requirement as per your applications uh, as per your database so you, are, you are you are free for that but um, the main concept of this mbc is when you are do, um, doing any task so you should be divided okay you never handle I mean, it is a good practice if you have if you are handling your mongo database in separate file and mysql is separate file there should be a one remote or one controller which decide which database should use okay it's okay, a bad sir. practice okay. if you are do using the mongo and mysql in a one file it's a bad practice you are merging the two different things inside the one and it creates the complexity for understanding and for managing for uh, designing the utility or uh, even though placing the different type of complex logic okay okay we have uh, we have uh, lots of time to uh, solve the queries and everything if any other have a doubt you can ask uh ashita yeah I, I have to leave now okay so i don't have the point okay Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone other have any doubt? Yeah, Sarita. Actually, I just want to add uh, on to the question which Shantanu asked. For example, you are saying that a particular application can have multiple framework, and those framework can be interacted through a single controller. Did you Did you mean that? Uh, did you mean that? Ah, uh, no, no, no. Uh, just I'm going to share the again that screen of the architecture. you can see each application have a different different controller okay yeah so so that if suppose you are making some application for one tool and same thing you required for the another tool okay so you can just copy paste that application and you have to just uh, miss tie that bind that apply, uh, application with the new one so you uh, when you are uh, miss uh, reusing that one so you are uh, taking a view also controller also and model also okay 
so within an application that can, can be say, only one this thing, is the right? one black box for the um, miss utility okay this is taking some input and giving a output okay okay so you can you uh, if the miss without if some application don't need any modification or customization you can use if some application needs some type of modification you can go in that particular view if the um, miss changes required in the view uh, view if required in the uh, logical part okay for the calculation part or the for anything so you you have to go only in that particular part and you have to uh, change that one or customize that one and uh, you have to patch that package uh, that application into another one you can patch easily okay Okay. The here is a controller for each application, not for uh, for whole tool. There is a not one controller for application wise controller is changed. And controller is playing a role of interacting in between. Okay. So it may be possible you are defining some view here, but it is not required in that tool. So then you don't need to uh, means uh, delete that one or the remove that one. You can keep that one. You have to only inherit the whatever the new tool required. Okay, this is an inheritance concept. There are the multiple view classes, and these are the three. Uh, you can see here the three view classes here. these three are the uh, playing the parent class role and this the outer one is a playing a child role so whatever you want only you have to inherit here okay oh. means your core application is not changing but the you can able to customize the that view as per the requirement of the new tool okay Yeah. Okay. Any other question? i can show you a more application if you want if you have a problem you have a doubt so i have a uh, miss more than the one application just i'm for demonstrating i'm showing you a, only one application if you send me open the another application and if i open that application you can see the same architecture and same thing so you can realize that we uh, miss the how you can re uh, reuse the mvc architecture and what's the miss when you start to implement it and not uh, using it then you uh, love this framework okay mvc architecture you need to implement in your application so uh, it will very helpful for your next application your first thing you feel that why you we need to a uh, by forget the task into the small if one file can complete the task why we need but for the industry purpose and for the uh, professional uh, miss if you want to uh, understand the professional coding it's a good practice to divide your task into the multiple model so uh, the uh, if your application or your task is going more complex you can easily handle you don't think about the for the current situation you have to think about the future and for future aspect mvc architecture is best fulfill the future requirement any question see ya
Hello, Priya. Yes, Sarita. Tell me. Can I stop this? Uh, if no one is yes, asking. Sure. No if uh, guys, if you do not have any question, then we can stop the recording. But and uh, yes, before going, please fill in the feedback form and please notify in the chat. 